show you what I'll be using. All right, so today we are gonna be fishing frozen sand fleas on bottom sweeper jigs for pretty much whatever bites. Right now, tog is technically in season. It's the last week of April, so realistically, it's the last time you could keep them until August in New Jersey. But I don't know if we'll keep any today, if we get any keepers. I'm more kind of jonesing for that tog bite, man. It's been a long winter without them. Oh, look at that, look at that. Oh. That, that, that's it. That is the bite I've been waiting for. Not a big guy. Oh, it's monkey, man. That is not the. That is not the one I was looking for. But hey, you gotta start somewhere, right? I'll take that. That's a little heartbreaker if I've ever seen one. But man, I'll tell you what. It's like a long lost friend you haven't seen in a while. See if we can't get another fish. First drop was a instant success. No skunk, man. Nothing worse than spending the day trying to find fish just to get skunked. I mean, this type of fishing, it's either they're there or they're not. Oh yeah, look at that. Oh. There's a, oh. He got me in the structure, son of a gun. That's that one's gone. That one's gone. Yep. Alright, dropping her back down. Hopefully we won't get snagged again. But that's the nature of this game. You play around the fire, eventually you are gonna get burned. Just kind of how it goes in this type of fishing. Ooh, fish. Oh, that's a nice one. Oh, gotta get him out, gotta get him out. He's trying to get me into that structure. They are good. They are good at getting you in that structure, man. Did you see how hard that fish fought? First few. Man, this is definitely a keeper. Oh, look at that guy. Holy smokes. I'll swing him in. All right. That is definitely a keeper. But this is probably the luckiest 15 inch tog. I'm assuming he's 15. The luckiest 15 inch tog, man. Hopefully he'll grow and get big, man. Look at the teeth they got on these guys. Kind of neat. See now, in, in younger years, I would have just dropped this back down, but I don't know if you could see this on film. That last run he took, he ran into that whatever piece of structure that's down there and frayed the line. And I'll be honest with you, for how expensive jigs have become, I would rather spend the extra minute retying right now rather than losing another jig due to my, you know, careless, I guess, attention or it's always worthwhile to check your line, especially when you're fishing near sticky stuff like we are. It is not worth dropping a frayed line down. I can't tell you, man, as a younger kid, you know, in my teens, 20s, you know, you're just jonesing to go fishing and catch fish. And sometimes you cut corners, and when those corners you cut sometimes will cost you. As I gotten, as I've gotten older, I've learned sometimes it's not worth rushing it. You know, these fish aren't going anywhere. At least I don't think they are. All looking. It's like it hit as soon as it got to the bottom. There we go. There we go. Little guy. Back to the rats. I mean, this guy, you can put in an aquarium. It's funny the different size fish mixed in together this time of year. You know, earlier this month, I went out, had an unbelievable tog trip. I posted that one on Patreon. 
but it's crazy the difference every drop man the the last time i went out almost every fish i caught was over 20 inches it was like a just school big fish but there we go as the water temp goes up these smaller fish start to migrate back in from off offshore and that looks like a female see how it has that weird darker complexion that's a female Since we figured out where that snag is, I've been trying to drop directly behind it. And I'm trying to keep a shorter leash, I guess, on the, the line. First few fish, oh, there's a hit. First few fish, oh, that's not a fish. First few fish, I was letting the tog kind of get the upper hand, you know, it's one of those learning curves you remember unlike you know certain other fisheries like flounder where sometimes you do want to let it take the bait in this fishery man he, if you give them an inch they're going to take a mile especially if there's structure they could run into Ooh, there we go Tell you what, man, these small guys, these smaller fish are spunky. Oh, poor fish. Didn't mean to drop you, buddy. Sorry. Now, I am splitting these uh, sand fleas in half. They are pretty big. Um, if they're about the size of the jig, I find that your hookup ratio is so much better. If you got a big piece of bait, I feel like, especially when you have a mix of fish in right now and there's small mixed with large, sometimes that bigger bait gets picked off by the little fish and you end up missing more fish. So start small, maybe towards the end if we have enough bait, we might try a big piece, see if a big tog sitting around. Ooh, there's a fish. That was a better fish. Oh yeah. Ooh. It's crazy when you you hook into the bigger ones instantly you can feel that size difference like look at that guy and he's not even that big but compared to our previous few fish you know what i mean like that's still not a keeper that's probably 13. One thing I always try to do is guesstimate when I'm closer to the bottom and stop it. I could always let more line out. Sometimes you'll find some bigger fish sitting slightly off the bottom. Grant, a majority of them are sitting really tight to the bottom, but every once in a while, there's a few bigger fish suspended up. So if you start getting into a patch of smaller tog my suggestion is try keeping your bait suspended up a little bit Oof. there's a fish oh son jeez son man this guy That would have been a keeper, man. That would have been two keepers so far. I'm not sure how many throwbacks. Uh, he's. I don't know how many throwbacks I've had so far, but I would say that's two. I forget what the limit is right now. It's so hard because every year everything changes, but I think it's either four or five. If you're gonna target these fish, definitely look into the regulations for how big they are to keep. That way you're not breaking the law. To be honest with you, man, them smaller tog probably don't have much meat on them anyway. So, growing up, man, I used to grow up in Atlantic City and you should see, whoa, this is a nice one. 
you should have seen the guys I used to watch keep small talk every time they were out fishing. And I get it if you're trying to feed your family and it's your only option, but a lot of these people I feel like we're just in the category of just wanting to keep something. That ain't a bad guy. I'll tell you what too. Growing up, when we used to tog fish off the jetties, we never used jigs. It's always these heavy, you know, high-low rigs, snafu rig. I'll tell you, ever since, you know, the last 20 years when the jig fishing's kind of become popular, it's really revolutionized this fishing. Because if you're fishing those heavy rigs, you know, you're easily fishing three, four ounces. If you're going out on the wrecks, you're fishing, you know, even heavier than that. So you automatically, if you're fishing that heavy, you have to fish heavier rods. And it kind of takes away from the fun of the fight from the fish because you're just reeling in so much weight. And see that last big one was slightly off the bottom. Oh, small guy. Even the small ones though, I'm telling you, the fight you get, the fight you get on these is pretty uh, pretty tough to match for an inshore fish. Sheep's head, I would say, sheep's head and trigger fish definitely trump hog, in my opinion, from a fight standpoint. But I'll take this over uh, flounder fishing every day of the week, man. I know I'm probably going to upset the flounder guys that counting the minutes till May 4th when they could go out and start targeting them, but, you know, to me, I'll take this any day of the week. Ooh, swing and a miss on that one. Got him. There we go. That might be the smallest one of the day. See, now this size sand flea, in my opinion, is a perfect bite size. You know, it's maybe got a little bit, and what I'll do, tips of the trade, man, trim a tad bit off. When they're real finicky, which today's, I would not consider them to be finicky because it's just that every time you could get it to the bottom, you have a fish. But um, when they're real finicky, sometimes, clipping an end off to get the scent in the water can be the difference between catching and not. I'm telling you, I've had these blow your mind, throwing like an entire sand flea on and, you know, not getting a touch. And the minute you clip a part off, they're on it like you couldn't believe. I do believe to an extent, there's a fish. I do believe to an extent the scent is huge when it comes to uh, triggering a bite I think sometimes it might make a non hungry fish take a bite now sand flea this size I'm going to have to just cut in half because especially if they were all big fish I could drop that down no hesitation but right now it seems like uh, there's a majority of smaller fish with a handful of you know keeper size mixed in i'm going to try keeping this one up high maybe i can get away from some of these real tiny tog now the one thing though if you are going to fish suspended uh you definitely have to feel for uh the slack sometimes if you're fishing above them they'll swim up from underneath of it and pick it up and you might have already missed the hit because they, they swam up with it type thing. Oh, man. I'm going to come back here. There's, it's funny, there's, there's like no medium ground. Really, the, where I want to fish is right underneath the boat, but I can't really maneuver the boat with the wind and tide being what it is. So we'll just go back to the honey hole that we've been hitting. Oh, man, I just missed out on one. Uh, 
And see, this is why in the summer I stockpile sand fleas. Didn't have to spend any money on bait today. And being that they're in the freezer, you know, I don't have to stop at a, at a bait store. I can just throw my boat on my back of my truck. Pretty much head on out. And granted, I could catch bait, but if I don't have to, especially with the time crunch that I'm in, I'll take, you know, just opening something out of the freezer then, especially if they're biting the way they're biting, I feel like you could pretty much throw anything at them right now and they'd be feasting. When that word temp gets like slightly above 55, man, it just, I don't know what it is. It's funny, like I started catching these fish when the water was in the 40s and they're real lethargic. Like you almost have to entice them to bite. Once it gets like 55 or higher, it is like you can't even get your bait down without getting a hit almost instantly. Ooh, I have one right there. Trying not to set on these smaller fish, hoping that like a bigger fish, and you could always tell when it's a bigger one because the small ones tap, tap, tap you to death. Like right now, I don't know if you can see that getting tapped. The bigger ones will just grab it like that. Oh, I missed them. Um, they grab it and pull almost like a flounder hit, like a big flounder hit. If you notice like the big ones don't tap you to death or don't, I call them machine gun hits. You know, the million sea bass hits. Those ones you gotta just kind of let go and hope that they don't steal your bait. It's the ones when they bend the rod tip an inch or so. That's the ones you wanna set on. Ooh, like that. Oh, there we go. Oh, son. That's a good one. Man. I'll tell you what, too. They are slippery. So when you grab them, got to get a good grip because they'll just slip right out of your hand. Hey, I think they might have robbed me. That or they came pretty close. There it is. Oh, come on. Get him out. Get him out. That one. See? And that was that snag I got snagged on earlier. They're not they're not stupid. Especially the bigger ones. They're grabbing that and they're instantly running for that structure, man. That's a nicer one. Fish like that and look. I'm gonna have to already retie again. See that? Just that one run braid me just enough. So much easier. I'll, I'll be honest with you. I'm kind of mad at myself I didn't take my kayak today. Um, honestly, I took my daughter out and my wife striper fishing. There we go. That's why if you're looking at that little Elsa rod and sun hat, that is not mine. But uh, I dropped them off for her nap. Came back out. I figured I already had my boat hooked up to my truck, so might as well just take it. But, um, you know, I was itching to do this type of fishing. And my daughter actually enjoys the tog fishing, I think, just as much as I do. But it's not as exciting you know, hopping in a boat and driving to a bridge. You know, she'd rather go for a ride up the salt marsh and look at all the cool stuff in the bays. And I don't blame her there. I think as a kid, I was the same way too. If I had a choice, whoa, oh son. This is a good one, real good one. He is fighting to get back to that structure. It's crazy. He did not like seeing the boot. Man, look at this guy. I think it's a big female. Nah, yeah, big female. And see, this one. This one, I think, is full of eggs. Look at that. 
So we're gonna try and get her back in the water as quick as possible. Yeah, that one's full of eggs, man. They're the ones you gotta take care of. If that, even if that one was of keeper size, man, it's not worth keeping these fish during their spawn period. Afterwards, I, I wholeheartedly can see it, but a fish like that, man, can produce up to 10,000 tog a spawn. And, you know, I'd rather see 10,000 more tog than me keeping one fish that's, you know, might feed me. And to be honest, man, this time of year, there's so many fish around. Like, I do love the end of spring when you start to see a plethora of fish. Like, flounder open up next week. Perch you can catch year round here, which are really good to eat. Uh, stripers, sheep's head will be in soon. Bluefish should be in soon. That's one of those things, like, I. Uh, if, if I need, really need to keep something, I'd probably go for perch. To, to be honest, they, they're one of the better eating fish. And there's not as much uh, pressure on them, at least where I live. Other than like the early spring when everyone else is kind of hunting stripers and perch, that's it's really the only time. That in winter. Very rare to find guys around here that target, whoa perch outside of winter and spring which I can understand like in the winter you know it's the only uh, species you really can target around here from a saltwater standpoint that's uh, near shore I know a lot of guys do the cod and tog fishing off the off the beach but here in my predicament where you have a smaller boat or a kayak you're kind of relinquished to the rivers and bays This will probably be my last drop, honestly. Uh, kind of want to explore a few different areas. And I, I know it sounds crazy leaving fish to find fish, but, um, you know, I feel like if you stay in a, ooh, if you stay in one spot and you only work that spot, yeah, you, you realize what you're gonna catch there, but some of the best fishing I've ever had was exploring areas that I had never tried and you know it's one of those things if you mark it off like hey I gave this a shot this date nothing there we'll circle back to it another time but hope you enjoyed today's video uh, there'll be links in the bio or the description down below for all the equipment I've used thanks for watching